<laughs> like a snake head eating the head on the opposite, the opposite side. side. I palindrome. I did not know what a palindrome was until I heard that song. Ah, but I guess race car is a palindrome. Yeah, yeah. So is uh, go I'm hang a salami. I'm a lasagna hog. <laughs> I'm a lasagna hog. That okay? So we're talking about Garfield <laughs> the cat. Yeah, the okay. the hog. Garfield the hog. Garfield the hog. That... U.S. Acres, as it's known. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and then Orson was the pig and his three... Yeah radical brothers um, wait orson exactly. no, like animal farm exactly ah, yeah ah, yeah animal farm yeah woo, orson, jim yes. davis smart mm. dude oh jim davis is dude i don't care what anyone says i think garfield was the best comic strip ever like yeah those books i used to love those as an elementary school kid and yeah probably middle school too you know those big long but i love that format like that doesn't exist anymore you know yeah the scholastic like garfield comic strip books or whatever yeah man yeah are those are cool mm -hmm. i really enjoyed the garfield without garfield thing yeah garfield happened. minus garfield yeah <laughs> it's, it's where it's just awesome. john arbuckle talking to himself it's really good it is it's amazing uh, since we're on the subject of um old cartoons and old characters and whatnot mm -hmm. did you see that they're making a horror remake of winnie the pooh <laughs> no uh -uh. yes i didn't it's, see that it's insane like christopher robbins in it he looks like a killer bear and like i'll tell you piglet looks terrifying he's like this human pig with fangs or something i, I don't remember what the character is but yes there's a remake a horror remake of winnie the pooh coming out blood and honey winnie blood the pooh and honey blood and yes. honey and i guess it's real i thought that it was like <laughs> fake yeah it seems very much like one of those fake fan things you know a fan sure. trailer or whatever. fan fiction speaking of fan fiction there mm -hmm. is a whole like thing that exists on youtube of fan fan fiction movies Mm -hmm. of like old franchises and there's an entire like ninja turtle section mm. online and there's actually fan fiction movies made of like ninja turtles like this is the way that a reboot should be mm -hmm. and i'm not shitting you the fan made movies on youtube are better than what's coming into the theaters mm. yeah yeah well the technology's there now you know for years, I've been that old uh, curmudgeon uh, about CGI for uh -huh. decades. I've been like, CGI sucks. There's yeah, no way too. around it. Me too. I actually think they've, I think they've gotten to the point that I can't really tell anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's not a puppet, which already is a knock against it. <laughs> Anything yeah, that's not that's... a puppet is some bullshit, but. Or at least an animatronic robot. Right. I really think it's gotten to the point where I can't complain too much. It looks pretty good. Yeah. And I don't mind things that are fully animated at all. I think they're great. It's just when it's taken the place of practical special effects in a sure live action where I'm just like, Come on, man. I know I yes. know that it took a third of the time and probably a third of the budget to do it this way. But come on. <laughs> what, I, what I don't what I never understood is why they would take like E.T. and Star Wars and all the classics and remaster yeah. them with CGI. Yeah. Like, what's the point? Those already exist. Yeah. Like make another movie. That's all you got to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you guys do do that. You make other movies. But you fuck up the old ones. Like what? <laughs> Come on, man. Like that's where yeah. I am going to keep my, my yeah. <laughs> I guess, boomerish attitude. Boomer cake. <laughs> think that's what it is. I think it's that's... like, let me have my cake or eat it too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> one of the two. Because <laughs> the, the problem is, is now you're going to have a generation of kids 
who are going to see the remastered version of Star Wars and not experience the joy of what, you know, that, and that's just sure. an example. Like E.T. does not look good digitally remastered. I don't care. Anyone can. And they lie about it. Yeah, they lie about it. Yes. They, they were like, oh, we didn't change anything. It's like, uh, I can tell that's a yeah. CG, I, CG E.T. <laughs> I've been watching this movie since I was seven. Are yeah. you kidding me? And you took the guns out. You don't think I noticed all that? Yeah, on, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's so many, like, so many things that just, like, it, it makes absolutely mm. no sense. It's just like, come on, just, you already made those movies. Why do you need to digitally remember? Are you trying to save money? Because you already spent the money. <laughs> yeah, the, the movie's done. Been the movie's done. done, yeah. And 80 special effects were awesome. They were. They, they were. Any, anyone who thinks CGI is better just needs to watch the thing and get Absolutely. over it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It, it is insane. Yeah. Um, I just think it's got to the point now where it's like the CGI doesn't look shitty. So I'm agreed. willing to accept it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like before it was just, it was too shitty looking. It, it just took me out of the movie. It was like, oh, what the hell yeah. am I watching? So I don't know. Anyway, kids, welcome to Accelerative Thrust. <laughs> I'm Dan. And I'm Eric. And did you like that intro? If not, oh, well, <laughs> you had to sit through it. Sorry. Um, I think what we're going to do today is uh, something that we've never done before. Uh -oh. That is, we're going to talk about records. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> <Doesn't>... <laughs> Taking it in a whole, whole new direction. A whole new direction. This is something Ooh. that. Something that we thought about experimenting with. You mean like public records? Like yeah, we're going to go to the library? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to look through the microfiche. Uh, yeah. Does that stuff still exist? My gosh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why it's called microfiche. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I've always, I always thought a microfiche was like a mento, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Like it should uh, be. I mean, I've heard microfilm, right? Is mm -hmm. that? Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. Maybe I made up the micro. Maybe thing. you are, Eric. Maybe micro you are. film. Micro but does film. that does that mean the world around you is any less crazy? Uh, no, no, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't. So you know what? <laughs> Be crazy. Be crazy all you want, buddy. <clears throat> because I oh, like no. it when you're crazy. Whoa! Because if you're crazy then it makes me less crazy because I'm crazy too. <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? And now I don't feel too bad for being crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've always said if you, anytime someone makes a statement about everyone else, they're usually the problem. Just for the <laughs> just say, like if someone's like, yeah, I yeah. don't know, man, everyone around here is crazy as hell. I don't know. Uh, I, it's probably you. I mean, what that means is you're that the I'm, common denominator bro <laughs> so what eric is saying is i'm always the problem because i'm always talking about it no i'm not talking about you i'm just talking in general it's just something yeah, but, i notice you know like but even if everyone I around crazy. here is an asshole probably not <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> i have to say that i have been guilty of saying that like at <laughs> sports bars oh well yeah Everyone at sports bars is assholes. <laughs> exactly. They're all sitting there drinking their beers and having their burgers. And at least 20 mm. TVs, three of them have something that's not sports. Mm. Mostly dumb and dumber. <laughs> yeah, dumb and dumber or something like that is on, or Jurassic Park or yeah. ET with the right. freaking new yeah. age film techniques. CGET, CGET. Yes, CGET. <laughs> dude <laughs> if they do a sequel they should do that cget yeah because what well, cgetpi it's computer generated <laughs> extraterrestrial private investigator yeah i'd see it yeah i like that a lot actually so he wears like a hat like one of those like uh hats with a trench coat and he's oh you know, shit like a detective like yeah, like a detective Holmes. exactly so it'll be oh. like it was a rainy night in the streets mm. of New York. I landed my spaceship right in the middle of the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. 
We yeah. should totally. Uh, that is remember when fiction. Alf would do that. <laughs> yes, I do. I remember when Alf would wear. Oh my god! You know what? All right. So, Alf is, and challenge me on this because yeah. you'll lose. Alf is by far <clears throat> the best TV alien of all time. He's better than the aliens on Alien. He's better than ET. He's better than. Um, Gosh, what other TV aliens? So you're just are? saying the best alien. The best media. alien of all time is Alf. You Gordon know, Shumway. Yeah, it's it's funny. I like Alf a lot. Dude, Alf was like unapologetically funny, man. It was it just is like a good show. But I mean, it was like it was like it was so funny too, because like looking back on it, it's like there were there are points now where it's like my parents let me be influenced by this. <laughs> yeah. Because like Alf was really <laughs> problematic <laughs> like um, there was like an episode where he um where he was like well actually this is multiple episodes but one specifically where he like actually did put their cat in a blender <laughs> and they had to like get a new one and it's just like but they acted like it was oh that's just out they had to get a new cat yeah they had to get like a new cat lucky too <laughs> yeah lucky <two. laughs> Yeah, basically, I think I don't even remember. Oh, like, man. but it's just uh, the way that that guy, the Alf, man. Do you know that Alf is a really weird, almost like culture jamming, uh, meta weirdness to it all? Did you know that? Like yeah, the guy that there's... created Alf, like Alf exists in three separate realities. There's yes. the the puppet that is controlled by the guy who's like a comedian right and then there's alf the entertainer who is not a puppet he's a real yeah. person he had the talk show yes he had and the then there's show. the tv alf from the tv show where he was playing himself yes Yes. It's all really really interesting and it like is right up my alley like i love all that yep Absolutely. culture jamming stuff you and know? i guess and, that alf um i guess the set like the actors had like emotional breakdowns working on the set <laughs> because of alf well because i guess that like the comic the mm -hmm. guy who was controlling the puppet right or whatever on the show cared more about the well-being of the puppet than the actual actors and actresses <laughs> I mean, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there were like, I don't know, read about it. I guess there were like yeah. trap trap doors set like all over the set for specific oh. reasons as to why. I don't know. It it, it all benefited the puppet. <laughs> like, well, he probably had to yeah, have access throughout the entire set. It, he, had, you know? he had to have access. So literally like on set, the actors, <laughs> the human actors and actresses literally had to like be careful where, where they were stepping and stuff. The human actors and actresses. Isn't that great to say that? <laughs> uh, there was crap. also, don't forget too, there was also an ALF, uh, couple of ALF animated series. Yeah, they were pretty good. Mm -hmm. I yeah, remember they, right. They weren't I liked bad. Them. Uh, the weird, I thought it was weird though. I thought ALF actually had one of the darkest endings ever um, hmm. to a series though. Like mm -hmm. it was actually a very dark ending. And I just remember kind of being upset as a kid. <laughs> wow. Do you remember that? Uh-uh. What happened? Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Uh so do you on the first episode of Alf, and yeah. do not like seriously, listeners, do not let this prevent you from watching Alf. <laughs> um if they haven't watched it yet. <laughs> They haven't watched it yet, unless they were our age. Not going to. Unless they're our age and grew up the same time we did. Uh, uh, they probably did not watch Elf. But um, at the beginning of the very first episode, when Alf lands in their yard mm -hmm. or wherever it was, uh, and they took him in and they hid him. Mm -hmm. um, the like C the CIA came to his door basically and was looking for. Uh, have you seen this alien anywhere? You know, and they're like, no, no. And they're like, well, we need to capture him to perform various tests on him. Mm. And he started describing the type of tests they're going to do. And they were like going to throw him into like a vat of like 
boiling water. They were going to like, you know, inject wow. him with multiple painful things. I'll fucking pull your fucking tongue out your fucking mouth and stab the shit with a rusty screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the series, he gets captured just like that by the same people that said they were going to do that in the first episode. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in the show, at least he's probably been eviscerated <laughs> tortured but then there was a tv movie do you remember that oh yeah where he ex apparently escaped the government facility oh good and he was just roaming the streets of like i don't know wherever he was <laughs> like new york or something well nice. folks i think we uh talked enough yeah. about our boomer opinions like we do every single time boomer take. um <laughs> and i think now we should do boomer opinions on records what do you think eric yeah. All right. So <laughs> record time. We need record a time. we need a little song. Maybe I'll make a little song. You should about record time. You, you should go maybe record. maybe a, a chubby checker type deal. That's what chubby, I'm here. Yeah, there you go. Come on, everybody. It's record time. <laughs> <laughs> it's record time. <laughs> well, hold on. You got to do the chubby checker voice now. <laughs> Come on, everybody! It's record time. It doesn't sound like Chubby Checker at no, all. No, it sounds like Grandpa it's Simpson. Like so stupid. It actually sounds like Grandpa <laughs> Simpson is what it sounds like, Eric. And that's let me that's get into. Let me try it a little. Come on, baby! <laughs> there it is. Come on, baby! It's record time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the one that did the twist. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, come on, baby! All right. So oh, that nice. corn song was a cover of <laughs> Chubby Checker, right? Which song? The twist. Uh, on the, oh yeah, uh, twist. Of... <laughs> <laughs> that was just uh, their take on Chubby Check. Okay. Yeah, twist. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Here we go. It really is record time. Now. We're also masters of culture jamming. Yeah. All right. And you're jamming. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't listened to negative lands a big 10 8 place in a while you yeah. really should i'm not telling the, the listeners i'm telling you dan <laughs> okay i that you should listen to a big 10 8 place a big 10 8 pretty place. soon okay i'll do that <laughs> okay we really have to get to this uh <laughs> records okay so my pick is by an artist named angel rada the record is called up a Deza. Um, and this came out this year. Okay. So Angel Rada, I had never heard of him before. Uh, but apparently he is a legendary Venezuelan musician who at a young age went off to school for music in Germany, uh, met the craft work guys and became enamored with synthesizers and electronic music um and has released like 10 or 11 albums that i was able to see uh and i haven't heard any of them so i don't want you to think i'm trying to be smart here and act like i know something because this is all new to me but i think that it's uh obvious that angel rada is a mu mature musician who understands um exactly what they're doing uh, and it comes through, but anyway, on to the record. This was cool. It was like, um, a real synth record, like a real one. And I know that I haven't picked anything that I can remember in a while that is super weird. Uh, I used to pick a lot weirder things, but then, you know, we all go through phases or whatever. So, uh, but I would say that this one definitely falls into the category of different you know interesting but yeah it really is a pure synth record which is pretty rare and what i mean by that is like there are tons of records that are ambient or noise or whatever uh, made with synthesizers but they're not necessarily very musical they don't feel like songs they don't move like that this is not like that the, this is comprised of songs that are very musical and super fun and strange, but at the, at the core, they really feel like pieces. They feel like songs. 
it's not beholden to any specific style or mood. I feel like it's just exploring how fun and strange music can be. But yeah, it uh like I said, it definitely there's there are words, there's some singing, it's mostly through vocoders. And the vocoders, if you are a vocoder fan, <laughs> which I uh obviously am, it's really well done. It has a really nice tone to it. Everything has this sound to it. It's just a really cool sounding record. Uh it sounds lo-fi, uh, but also like very clean it's not fuzzy or muffled what it sounds like to me is like the cut the most cutting edge the best sound you could have gotten using equipment in the late 70s that's how it sounds to me it's very clean and clear and the production is great but there's a grittiness to everything because I don't know if it's made on old things or if it's made to sound like it's made on old things, but either way, it doesn't really matter because it it works. Yeah, so these are just kind of short little pieces and they do move like songs. They have rhythms and beats and parts and changes. It doesn't mean it doesn't go into some kind of crazier realms, but uh, for the most part, it's super enjoyable. And so the things that I that it reminded me of, and that's funny because I'm sure that Angel Rada inspired the things that I'm about to say that this sounds like. So that's always kind of funny. It's like retroactive inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely reminded me of Air. Uh, big time, Air. Uh, Black Moth Super Rainbow, big time. Just big synths, big vocoders, cool drums, um, really similar to that. And then Wendy Carlos, uh, especially with the vocoders and some of the synth sounds and then uh, things that are more purely synthesizer driven like Vangelis or even Kraftwerk to an extent. I think Kraftwerk's songs are more song-like, but uh, yeah, I would say if you really like the sound of synthesizers and are kind of over the modular kind of just clicky rhythmic sequenced stuff that's coming out um and you want a little bit of humanity in your synthesizer records then i think this definitely would fit the bill so what do you think dan yeah this i thoroughly enjoyed this record like really really enjoyed it a lot it was um i don't know i guess the way that i would sort of describe it uh definitely um a synth record like you said but there was also like at times, sort of like this, I don't know, there was, there was almost like two different descriptions I could use here. Mm -hmm. At times, it almost reminded me of like, not really an ambient, but I guess a better way to describe it would be like a new age inspired electronic record. But at the same time, and this brings up, I think this is more sort of, uh, could be more related to your description, Eric. At the same time, it sounded almost very childlike and mm -hmm. like you said, song oriented because mm -hmm. it was a really fun album to listen to. It wasn't. And that's why I kind of hesitate to use the word ambient mm -hmm. um, or even new age, honestly, but it kind of just sort of had that feel sonically to me, but mm -hmm. that's where it ends. It, it really, it's really a, just a fun record to listen to in in a weird sort of way yeah um it's also very calming because there are some songs on here i guess maybe that's where i'm kind of getting the ambient sort of description from is <clears throat> some of the songs remind me of what i used to hear on like sort of like national geographic documentaries or mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. sitting at a museum you know you know you know like uh the star lab or something, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. there used to kind of be like those scores, those movie scores that had like the electronics in the back. Mm -hmm. Some of it remind me of that, but then also other times it sounded like a, I don't know, like a theme song to an after school special in the eighties or something mm -hmm. like, you know, just had that really like, you know, do, 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 you know, just really, right. I can't really describe it. It was a really fun record that at times would have you kind of sit back and, relaxing but then other times had you like bob your head 
you know? Mm -hmm. And so in that situation, having said that, I will say that this record, I think, is best if you put on the headphones and devote your full attention to it. You kind of have to put in work for it. And that sounds like I'm saying that it's a difficult listen. I wouldn't really say it's necessarily a difficult listen. I just think mm -hmm. that there's, I, you kind of have to just sort of let it be an adventure. And mm -hmm. if you do that, it's worth the adventure as far as I'm concerned. Like that's kind of how I would describe this record. It's yeah, it was almost like listening to an adventure, <laughs> you know, as nice as weird as as weird as that sounds, I think that that's like some of it sounds very alien like. Mm -hmm. Like I would imagine like it's the type of music that would be playing if the aliens abducted you and played music while they were doing it. <laughs> you get yeah. on the spaceship and they have this weird music going on. <laughs> and some of it sounded like that, but mm -hmm. but there's also I don't want to use the word alien too much either, because like you said, Eric, there's very much a humanistic quality to this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound mechanical. It doesn't sound. You can tell that it's being written by an experienced musician who knows what he's doing with these types of instruments. Mm -hmm. And it's that that's amazing to me. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Black Moth Super Rainbow. That mm -hmm. was one of the first things that I put in my recommended if you yeah. like. Um <laughs> And also air, I can see that. I didn't think of that, but also, yeah, craft work. I would mm -hmm. also say a little bit of Tangerine Dream at times. Yeah. Um, sure. But also, a lot of this reminded me of Bruce Hack. Oh, sure. Because yeah. it really had that. And Bruce Hack, it's funny because, as you mentioned, how the, this probably inspired air and Black Moth Super Rainbow, I'm almost positive bruce hack probably had an uh, an inspiration on this had mm -hmm. an influence on this yeah could be. i mean because bruce hack was what 60s something like so. that 70s? Yeah. so um and i don't know angel rada was probably around in what you said the 70s 60s 70s yeah yeah okay. i i think he originally i don't know i honestly the history of this performer is really a long interesting one i just haven't done much research so but i think he probably got to start in the 50s but sure. i don't know if it was okay. with electronics you know sure sure well he, i think he was just a musician until that kind yeah. of, it makes me wonder would bruce hack and angel rada have crossed paths out i have no idea yeah because that that would be very interesting to find mm -hmm. out too so yeah very good record i really enjoyed it a lot it was nice. it was a lot of fun and sometimes electronic music can let's be let's face it can be very not fun mm -hmm. by design <laughs> yeah but this is th this was definitely great so um my pick for this week was from a rapper by the name of subtitle he's a west coast based mc from la um his real name is giovanni marx and the only reason why i say that is because i do believe and i could be wrong about this I do believe he kind of goes by Giovanni Marx now. Um, hmm. And actually, I'm not even sure if he's still releasing records under subtitle or not. But he actually put out records on Gold Standard Laboratories or GSL, who is, of course, known more for spazzy hardcore. Hmm. Um, I believe The Locust put out like a record on that label. Hmm. Aside from all that, I know GSL was known for like sort of the spazzier sort of experimental like hardcore type stuff mm -hmm. so it was pretty interesting that a rapper was on gsl and that was in the early 2000s now this is an ep from him um and i i was kind of confused as to when it came out because mm -hmm. there is literally no information that i could really find on this record for some reason I don't know if this was like a self-release. It is on Spotify. Now, Spotify, I think, says it came out in 2020. However, mm -hmm. I the only thing that I could find on, because it's not listed on his Wikipedia discography, mm -hmm. the only thing I could really find on it is an article that was kind of talking about how Art Rapper subtitle is back with a new record called Blackjack Parsons. Mm -hmm. and But that article was in 2011. So 
-hmm. It must have came out in 2011, maybe just as a, I don't know, maybe it was just like a limited cassette release or something. Mm -hmm. And then he just decided to put it up on Spotify in 2020. That would be my guess. On Bandcamp, it says this record dropped on 11-11-11. Whoa. And then says released April 1st, 2020. So it must have been... It was a limited time free download. Okay. It All was right. Taken that makes out sense. of circulation for years and here it is again. It says, okay. That makes a lot so, of sense. Yeah. So it was, sounds like a hundred percent self-released, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very short, but in that short amount of time, he covers a lot of ground sonically, which I think is really cool. And also interesting for a rapper. Um, but also maybe not so much considering that <clears throat> rappers have kind of been, I feel with production, even mainstream rappers have become more comfortable with things that sort of were definitely not the norm, even 10 years ago in rap music. Um, so could I say that it honestly was ahead of its time? Maybe not, or maybe so. Um, but it is, in that short amount of time, pretty crazy, pretty funky and experimental. And I would say a little challenging to listen to. I, the, the fact that it's very short, I think might make it a bit easier for some people to digest just based on the fact that it's not really long songs. Um, but there, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening. Uh, first of all, um, in also doing the research in that article that I was talking about, I came across the fact that the title, and you you probably, I wouldn't be surprised if you know this, Eric, the title is a reference to John Whiteside Parsons, who was a rocket engineer and a chemist mm. and an occultist. And he was the leader of a black magic sex cult that L. Ron Hubbard was once a member of. Mm-hmm. Did you know any of this, Eric? No. Okay. It is believed that he blew himself up in a house where his body was found while he was doing a science experiment or black magic ritual. (laughs) (laughs) Because they found his body like dismembered basically like Hmm. in like his lab or something. I'm not sure, you know, what subtitles reasons are for naming the album after him. Mm -hmm. Maybe just some wild inspiration. And that's a pretty wild story that happened in Mm -hmm. reality. So I can only imagine, Oh, well, this music I'm going to make sounds like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or right. something. Yeah. It, it's not super unlistenable. It's, I would say more fun and weird, mm-hmm. but it's pretty outsider-ish for a rap album. It, mm-hmm. it really, and that's really no surprise. If you're familiar with subtitle, he always has kind of been offbeat and off kilter, but this record sounds even different than his, quote unquote normal stuff because really what's what's if you listen to subtitle like what's really normal about his stuff anyway throughout this album he uses like electronics he does there's a lot of kind of like talking slash rapping with these sampled robot computer voices that kind of sound like um those commands that you do you know or like the robotic voices you hear sometimes on youtube videos like or even just like uh siri responding to a question Mm -hmm. or something Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and so it it has a very weird specific type of feel to it um it's pretty sci-fi sounding there are times where it almost sounds like it almost gives me images of like i don't know i remember reading a story that while jay mascus was recording um you're living all over me that the amp levels got so high that it started to melt the mixing boards. Like, I don't know if that's true or not, hmm. <laughs> but like this almost has that sort of feel to it where it, and, and I don't mean that in that it's loud and abrasive, even though it is kind of loud, it just kind of has that really lab feel to it, mm-hmm. which maybe plays into why he called it blackjack Parsons. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very interested in, you know, this album and I like the fact that I can't really find any explanations on it. Yeah. Also at the same time, because it really leads to interpretation. But the production is very weird and dense and packs a lot of stuff 
there are times where he's he's basically not even rapping he's just kind of talking and in fact there's like this <laughs> hilarious like sort of bit at the end where he's just like and even he does it at the beginning a little bit where he kind of introduces the record mm-hmm. and then at the end he's just kind of like all right i hope you enjoyed this the next record's probably not going to sound like this you know what i mean right it just sort of seemed like a really like random thing that he just decided to do and i think that's awesome and it sounds to me like he took advantage of the fact that maybe he was just not tied to a label anymore mm-hmm. and he just decided to do whatever he i don't know what the reasons for him putting out this record were and also why it's kind of sort of way under the radar but that's one of the reasons why i was drawn to it mm-hmm. also the fact that it is a very short record i really like that it's an ep so that's to be expected but i kind of feel like if this would have been like a 70 minute long record it would have worn thin so Mm -hmm. i think he knew just how long to make this record i i thought this was great i would say if you're into pretty much any outsider-ish rap you know we're talking bus driver we're talking aesop rock we're talking a little bit of cool keith maybe del the funky homo sapien Mm -hmm. but also i would say if you're into like some of the more I guess outsider-ish, I'm not, definitely not as familiar with like the electronic genre as Eric. So maybe Eric could even, maybe Eric has a completely different take on this record than I do. But um, to me, this musically sometimes sounded like it might've been inspired by Aphex Twin or Mm -hmm. maybe even like Square Pusher or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or or even like, um, who's that one group that had the, uh, the hit Where's Your Head Out? In like the early 2000s basement uh, which, jacks basement jacks stuff yeah. like that like mm-hmm. some of the music group sounded sort of like that yeah this is a great melding of like electronic and hip-hop and it's done in a way that i don't think has really been done before or since what did you think eric yeah uh it was really something yeah. I, <laughs> I mean i loved it i really yeah. did uh Fantastic. it was totally wild pretty amazing it's yeah checked a lot of boxes for me and i guess yeah it's funny because technically this is hip-hop but not not really i don't know Mm -hmm. like it's a very cut up like a music concrete sort of cut up method style thing it's also funny it's self-referential almost to a ridiculous level which you touched upon but like the first track is seriously just a computer voice telling us about the record we're going to listen to (laughs) yes exactly and then (laughs) like (laughs) and it's funny because subtitle checks in on us (laughs) throughout you know Mm -hmm. there's like a a narrator like he's like okay you're about seven minutes into blackjack parsons (laughs) now uh hope you're enjoying it it's like what that just seven minutes why you know yeah yeah. but because of that it totally has a different feel to say that this is dense or eclectic doesn't actually even come close this is so sample heavy and so chopped up and so strange that you don't even know if you're in a song if you're in some sort of skit or interlude or just some crazy glitch kind of thing like you don't actually know where you are during this entire thing but that's really fun and exciting too and it kind of takes it kind of turns it into one sort of statement instead of a a few different songs and i think in the however long it is i think that um it moves in a way that feels like this is presented as one thing uh not just a collection of songs but yeah the way it's made what it sounds like the sample choices the synth choices the sound choices are all really interesting i really liked it and i hardly ever talk about the actual rapping on when we talk about rap albums Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i think it's because i don't know it's most of the time rappers have a voice and they go with it so there's Mm -hmm. not really a lot to say about it it's like that's their voice you know this one is a little different. I think it moves around and changes a bit. And I think there are other people on it too. And so with that being said, I like the delivery. It's kind of nerdy, um, yeah. not very uh, aggro or whatever, which I really appreciate. 
I don't know exactly what uh, subtitles talking about most of the time, if not the entire time, but it's not that braggadocia kind of stuff at all on the uh, band camp. One, a, a couple tags kind of caught my interest and a lot of them are what you would expect, you know, electronic avant-garde experimental hip hop and stuff. But it also says Alistair Crowley mm-hmm. and Thelema. So mm-hmm. apparently does have a nod at least to magic. I didn't hear it in the lyrics that much, or I at least didn't pick out anything that um sounded like that, but it must be inspired by it. But yeah, I think that because with hip hop, I don't have sort of the background with it. I don't know as many things, but things that this made me think of the self-referential commenting on yourself, having someone sort of narrating this crazy nonsense really reminded me of negative land big time. Mm. Like Mm -hmm. it's very funny when someone comes on a record and says something about the record. Like, I think Mm -hmm. that's real. It's really meta and it's a lot of fun. It shows you that they understand what's happening and they're not taking it that serious, you know? And so just straight off the bat or whatever, I would say if you like Negative Land, you will like this just because of the presentation and how it's made. But yeah, it also reminded me of Aphex Twin, Danny Brown, maybe a little bit. Mm, yes. But mostly it this is gonna sound nuts, but it reminded me of Men's Recovery Project. Yes. You like know what? just completely. It's so um, interesting you said that because I can't believe I didn't put that down. When you started listing off what it reminded you of and you started mm-hmm. talking about self-referential, mm-hmm. that came to mind right away. Yeah. yeah. So I I really enjoyed it a lot. I I will say, especially the last track, um, that self-referential element of it can wear a little thin <laughs> and be a little cheesy. Yeah. And honestly, without the last track, I wouldn't even have said that. But the last track is very much you know, thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed it. And this was Blackjack Parsons. And it's like, okay, we know we just, this isn't the what thing. the next record's going to you know? sound like. Right. And so <laughs> I liked that, but I probably could have done without the last track, sure. but whatever. Um, the track pulled paper is uh-huh. thick. Like oh, it's yeah. really, really cool. It's, it's amazing. That was my favorite uh, track on here. So yeah, it's really out there. It does a lot of things, but it also is enjoyable and and pretty funny. And you wouldn't expect a hip hop record to be comprised the way this one is, to be assembled the way this one is. Absolutely. So I really liked it. Yeah, you remember that uh, Men's Recovery Project song, uh, Smoking That Magic Rock? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a I good one. I love that one. It, it, honestly, subtitles voice reminds me hmm. of whoever whoever's doing well i'm assuming it's probably sam mcfeeters doing yeah. the vocals on that smoke that magic raw <laughs> you know vietnam something about vietnam thrown in there yeah <laughs> ding, yeah, ding, 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 ding. yeah great stuff <laughs> all right so the, our local pick is uh telekinetic yeti primordial uh this record uh let me preface this by saying this has been getting a lot of press a lot of rave reviews um and with good reason um so i don't know anything about telekinetic yeti i think i saw them live they were called something else before they were telekinetic yeti right Hmm, i don't know i maybe i'm wrong about that but i swear i saw them in muscatine at one of sam kester's um river city throwdown Hmm. Or at least maybe they weren't called something different, but this band at least I think formed from the ashes of another band. Hmm. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. The only thing I know about Telekinetic Yeti are that they are a two-piece band from Dubuque and they're pretty sick. Heavy, meaty, low-end riffs. Um, I would call this just great, a great take on, um, you know, stoner metal doom metal uh there's a lot more going on than just that um there definitely are some trippy elements involved where the tones sound pretty otherworldly um and you know some reverbs and delays um 
So there's also kind of, I would say, a psychedelic element, but at its core, it's just a really great heavy metal record, I would say. It sounds amazing, uh, in my opinion. The guitar work is phenomenal. The drumming is phenomenal. Just overall, I really, really like this from beginning to end. I think the vocals really heavily reminded me a little bit of like a cross between Neil Fallon and Lemmy. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, I mean, if you're into this sort of thing, there's absolutely no reason why you wouldn't just love this. I mean, all the, all the bands that you would think of like electric wizard, um, Melvin's clutch high on fire, but there's also kind of an element of like, helmet in this as well or like torch it's also just very well written songs i think too there's a lot going on for the you know for me to just say that it oh it's just a good old-fashioned stoner metal record that i wouldn't think that would be very accurate because i i feel like this record is also kind of pushing that genre a little forward a bit like Mm -hmm. it it doesn't sound, it sounds like telekinetic Yeti 100%. I can't say that I've really heard another band in this genre that sounds exactly like these guys. And that's kind of difficult to do considering. And that's just the way that that's the way I see it. But yeah, I think that if you're into all those bands and, you know, just into like just really good metal, uh, I think that you would love this record. Uh, so yeah, Dubuque, you guys did good. <laughs> <laughs> Dubuque, Iowa. Iowa has been producing some pretty damn good metal lately. For sure. Um, so yeah, man, I, I hope to see these guys sometime, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think, Eric? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, I mean, it is very heavy, very sludgy. I also found it to be, I hate this word, uh, the word that I have is groovy, but I hate that word. What I mean though, is like, they're not afraid to kind of like swing it a little bit, you know, and anyone who knows me uh, is sick of me saying this, but most of the time, the, the thing that's missed in the Sabbath worship, I've even said this on the show is that swing element, you know, Mm -hmm. everyone just sort of does the heavy, break from sabbath bloody sabbath or something or children of the grave or whatever but like hole in the sky is really cool too you know like there's a swing to it Mm -hmm. and there's a swing to everything sabbath did and most people ignore that i uh telekinetic yeti does not ignore that um and it's really cool but there's also a lot of epic kind of metal moments going on too what really stood out to me though with this because it's two people they seem to really be comfortable with each other like they really are can follow each other anywhere and because of that it it like seamlessly moves between different time signatures different moods different styles and you don't even know what's happening they'll be in a break or whatever, and then drop it to almost half time, but not quite. It's like, they feel it out and it, everything's felt, but it's also really pretty technical too, especially, I mean, there's only two elements here. So like to say, Oh, the guitars are super, whatever. And the drums are super, whatever. Like it doesn't work that way. It's one concise unit, you know? And, uh, and it does go so many different places. Um, I really liked it. And what I really liked about that too, is that it doesn't seem like they're afraid to go anywhere. Like they're not afraid to just like let the whole thing completely bottom out, just blah to nothing, you know, but they're also not afraid to go huge, epic, soaring, mythical creature flying through the sky, epic levels either, you know? And so they explore a lot of different territory in that sense. But yeah, uh, I would say that there's elements of Sabbath, of course, Uh, clutch mostly through the vocals, but 
actually clutch has some tracks too that really would fit with this kind of thing dragon the dragonfly in particular is one sure. that i'm thinking of um that's off elephant riders right right yeah okay and uh also a lot of um like rock heavy rock or hard rock elements too it's not just straight metal and so i heard elements of like denava and assemble head and sunburst sound so a little more like on the psychedelic heavy rock mm -hmm. parts of music and so they go like i said it's seamless they just move through these things they're not like here's this part that sounds like this or here's this part that sounds like this it's like just all of these different elements existing at once and moving freely it's it's pretty incredible but yeah it's really cool stuff i also hope to catch them live uh sometime it looks like they're going to be at wildwood on august 4th with white hills so wildwood saloon in iowa city yeah i don't know I'm, i've not heard white hills so i might have to look into that and see about going uh but yeah i i was pretty blown away by it i listened to it twice which is kind of an investment like it's not short this it goes really invites you in to be immersed in what they're doing for a while and so the first time through i i didn't quite understand how incredible it was but upon the second listen yeah i started to just realize how seamlessly and comfortable they move through the different elements and yeah it's really really heavy if you like stoner doom whatever or even just epic stuff i think you'd really like it so yeah and definitely has a hypnotic quality that you were talking about yeah. i didn't i was actually kind of trying to find a way to describe that like when you were talking about the melding of different parts and stuff like that there and i think that also kind of comes with the psychedelic mm -hmm. sort of element uh as well yeah great stuff man if you're from iowa or or anywhere uh <laughs> check this out if you're into uh into like metal or psychedelic music or like eric said anything epic yeah so if you're a early genesis fan with peter gabriel on vocals check this out yeah you're not gonna hate it probably you're not gonna hate it <laughs> i yeah that's that's what i think anyway and that's nice. what you should think too because you should think how i think if you know what's good for you. So yeah, Eric. Uh, well, what did we learn today? I don't know. We we mostly just talked about Alf. To be to, to be honest. It so we learned that there is such thing as a Alf heavy episode. What Alf is like alien life form, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what if there was like a CG Alf PI? <laughs> yeah, CG ALF PI. Yeah. yeah. Computer generated alien life form private investigator. Yeah. <laughs> or or it could be a CG Alf ETPI. Yeah. Computer wow. generated alien life form extraterrestrial private investigator. It rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> it does, yes. Wow. Try to say that five times fast. <laughs> um, right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do no, it. I don't. Oh, I okay. can't. I can't. Oh, I thought you were gonna do it. I can't oh, speak man. quickly. Yeah, I can't either. Um, so yeah, uh, that that's uh, it. We learned that we learned about CGI. We learned about more of our opinions because we're mm -hmm. old. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've noticed it's, it's the old people that want to give their opinions on everything, right? I know. Yeah, and facts. Well, yeah. And let's yeah. face it; some of them are facts. <laughs> well they were facts in the in the 80s in the they 80s probably they were changed facts. now <laughs> yeah that's true i forgot things change yep mm, shoot facts are temporary yeah facts are temporary they change over time <laughs> <laughs> they become fake news eventually yeah <laughs> fake facts fake facts there we go fake facts <laughs> fake facts fake facts facts um news. If you like what you heard, go ahead and let us know about it or don't. Yeah. 
please no, though that, it would be but so please, nice yes. so it nice be... to hear from us even a single one of you people <laughs> yeah 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 and you know again as always if you want us to review a band or an album or or you just want to tell us about an artist particularly a local artist because man i'll tell you what scouring band camp looking for local artists sometimes can be a chore man sometimes um, sometimes yeah but we've been doing pretty good at there's been a lot of really good stuff coming up and we've actually got some, some more local releases that we're going to talk about in future episodes. We've already got some waiting in the vault. So mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of good stuff coming out. Uh, yeah. We just, we would like to hear more of it. So yeah, let us know if you're in a band or you're an, an artist that would like us to review, or, I mean, this is another kind of wild idea. What if you're a comic book artist from Iowa and oh. you want to have us read your online comic book and we could review that or yeah. like we did review Corey Peak's really brilliant 36 project mm -hmm. that he had mm -hmm. um, on YouTube and video. You know, if you have a video you want us to review. Yeah. Yeah. Send us that. It doesn't have to be music. That, yeah. Good point. What do you think? What do you think, Eric? Does, yeah. That sounds good. Then, that yeah. is our Iowa artists. Let yeah. us know what you're what you're working on. If you want us to review another human, you know, just send them to us. You know, and yeah, we'll, for observation. For observation. <laughs> After all, we are CG Alf PIs. So. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening to every single episode. <laughs> Thank you very much. Y'all have a good day. Bye. Bye. It was a rainy night in the streets of New York. I landed my spaceship right in the middle of the Bronx. <laughs>